Who would have thought that the renowned Saw series, with its groundbreaking first installment, was completed in just 18 days? Back then, it not only achieved a global box office of $1 billion but also garnered incredible reviews. This classic film series has now reached its ninth installment, although the subsequent plot may not be as stunning as the earlier ones, it still stands as a remarkable piece in the suspense thriller genre. Today, let's dive into Saw 8. A swiftly approaching vehicle is intercepted by the police. The vehicle continues to accelerate, showing no intention of stopping until it collides with a barrier set up by the police. Finally coming to a halt, Edgar immediately kicks through the shattered glass and shows no intention of giving up the escape. The police were on their way, and when they saw this, Edgar decided to run. Edgar escapes to a nearby abandoned factory, climbing to the rooftop using the stairs inside. The pursuing police are hot on his heels. At a turning point, Edgar notices a conspicuous X on a steel pipe ahead, seemingly what he's been looking for. Behind the X, Edgar discovers a remote-like weapon. It turns out he came here to find something, not just to evade the police. Faced with the police pursuit, Edgar decisively surrenders, raising his hands. The police urge Edgar to drop the threatening weapon he holds. However, Edgar utters strange command phrases, claiming to be looking for Detective Halloran. The police are completely baffled by Edgar's actions. Detectives Keith and Halloran arrive at the scene promptly. Detective Halloran advises Edgar to drop the item in his hands. Put down that remote. I can't. What's that for? Games are just getting started. What game? His game. His rules. I gotta choose who dies. Damn or me! Edgar's words leave Halloran utterly confused. Despite the officer's persuasion, Edgar shows no intention of letting go of the object in his hands. As the clock strikes 12, Edgar decisively presses the button on the remote control. This action quickly triggers a collective gunfire from the police. Edgar's hand is directly hit by multiple bullets, while Detective Halloran was trying to figure out what was going on. Edgar was shot in the chest by one of the officers and was dying. It's started. After uttering these words, Edgar is rushed to the hospital by the police for emergency treatment. Although he survives, he remains in a coma. At this moment, the police are completely unaware that, at the very instant the remote was pressed in another locked room, an escape game has been initiated. The five woke up in a daze and had no idea what was going on. At this moment, they realized that they were not only wearing a strange iron barrel mechanism on their heads, but their necks were also chained up. The bewildering circumstances leave them dumbfounded. Before they can grasp the situation, the voice of the kidnapper emanates from the broadcast. It turns out that these people have been kidnapped because of their lies and have come here to be punished by the game. To survive, they must undergo the kidnapper's game test. An offering of blood, no matter how little, will give you a green light to escape from this room with your lives. If you can release yourself from your demons, you can begin to shed the chains that those demons bring with them. Make the simple blood sacrifice that I've requested, or face severe consequences. The choice is yours. The rules of the game are announced by the kidnapper, but before they can fully understand, the iron chains around their necks start retracting, and saws on the iron walls begin to rotate. Now, clueless about how to play the game, they desperately clutch the chains to keep themselves away from the saws. One man attempts to use a saw to cut the chain on his neck, but immediately suffers backlash. Proving the futility of such methods, one of the women remembered the hints given by the kidnappers and chose to use her own hand to get closer to the chainsaw. The blood-stained chainsaw opened the barrel on her head and the chainsaw stopped. Anna hastily shares this rule with the others. Following the hint, the remaining individuals sacrifice their own blood, yet they fail to notice a man on the ground still unconscious. As the iron door on the iron wall opens, the chains continue retracting, pulling them into another locked room. By the time the man on the ground awakens, it is too late. The only sound the four survivors heard was the man's screams. As the door closed behind them, the chains stopped being recycled. They are now to face the challenges of the second level. Soon in a park in the city, a corpse with a bucket on its head is found hanging under a bridge, leaving onlookers in shock. The police swiftly transport the victim for examination and discover a distinct symbol on the victim's body. The modus operandi is clearly indicative of the perpetrator emulating the notorious Jigsaw, who was renowned in previous years. Strangely, they find a wrapped USB drive left inside the victim's body. The recorded message on it features the voice of Jigsaw once again. The games have begun again, and they will not stop.
until the sins against the innocent are atoned for. I will take care of the next four. You take care of the rest. The meaning of which remains elusive, Detective Halloran is left with no choice but to carry the recording for identification, and on the other side, in the secret room, as the clown rode in on his bike, a new round of the game began, the iron chains would continue to be retrieved, and they had no idea how to make them stop, they can only follow the light cues from the previous level, they started confessing the bad things they had done, Mitch said he once sold a motorcycle that accidentally caused the buyer's death, the buyer couldn't handle the high horsepower, and an accident occurred just 10 minutes after he left. Mitch claimed it wasn't his fault. Anna claimed her child had an accident because her husband, while asleep, rolled over and suffocated the child, causing their death. But these confessions didn't seem to make the iron chain stop. Before others could share their deeds, Mitch noticed a tape recorder on the clown. A rope connected the tape recorder to a switch device. And as soon as Mitch took the tape recorder, the retrieving iron chains came to a halt. Although they temporarily saved their lives, they were dumbfounded by the direction the iron chains were heading, because the iron chains would continue to retrieve. They would all be hanged here, to stay alive. They could only listen to the tape recorder for any clue. Before Mitch could play the recording, three syringes filled with liquid dropped in front of Ryan. The syringes were labeled with a strange set of numbers. The tape recorder provided a hint that the captors intended to test one of them. Among them, one person caused the accidental death of an asthmatic woman due to theft. This person had the chance to save the woman but chose to stand by idly. The three syringes in front of them were the test for the thief. While they were unconscious, the kidnappers injected poison into the thief's body. One of the three syringes contained the antidote, while the other two contained high-concentration sulfuric acid. If the thief could inject the correct antidote, everyone would pass the stage. Otherwise, they would all face doom. Ryan asked the person responsible for the act to confess voluntarily. Anna realized that if someone was injected with poison, there would surely be marks on their body from the syringe. They quickly checked themselves, and only Carly remained indifferent. This made Ryan realize that Carly was the one responsible. Ryan handed the three syringes directly to Carly, but faced with a life-or-death choice. Carly couldn't bring herself to face it. Nobody knew which one was the antidote. Mitch reminded them that the numbers on top might be an important clue. It wasn't until Carly saw the number 353 that she remembered what happened. It turned out that during that incident, the penniless Carly stole the asthmatic woman's bag and only found $3.53 in it. But Carly had never realized that because of that small amount of money in her indifference, she caused someone's death. Although they were certain that the number was related to that incident, no one knew whether the syringe labeled with 353 contained the antidote or sulfuric acid. Before Carly could make a choice, the iron chains around their necks started to retract again. In the twinkling of an eye they had been hoisted up, driven by the will to survive. Ryan, holding the syringes, had to make a cruel decision. Ryan grabbed Carly and inserted all three syringes into her neck. Finally, the iron chains around everyone's necks were released, and they fell to the ground, saving their lives. At that moment, Carly realized the syringes on her neck and realized something was wrong. As sulfuric acid had been injected into her body, as her internal organs corroded, Carly experienced the sensation of bleeding from every pore. Although Ryan's actions were condemned by Anna, he explained that he had no other choice. Mitch advised them to calm down quickly because they still needed to figure out how to escape from there. Mitch noticed the numbers on the syringes, realizing that they might be the password to the next level. His speculation was confirmed when they successfully entered the next secret room. Before they could understand the situation inside, the door behind them closed. A window here made Ryan realize they were trapped in some remote village. However, the window was sealed shut with iron bars, making it impossible to escape. They had no idea where they were. Ryan accidentally discovered a locked door with a warning sign not to exit. He grabbed a shovel and prepared to break the door, but Mitch urged Ryan to calm down. However, in his state of despair, Ryan no longer wanted to play the captor's so-called game of rules. Before he could start smashing it, Ryan forcefully stomped on the floor, shattering it instantly. However, concealed steel wires hidden beneath immediately tightly wrapped around his foot. Ryan's foot was immobilized, and now he regretted his impulsive decision. Anna quickly pried open the floor to assess the situation and found a set of pulley mechanisms with wires. Beside it, an operating lever appeared. Meanwhile, Mitch found a tape recorder on the other side. The tape recorder implies that this is a punishment for violating the rules. It mentioned that pulling the operating lever would restore freedom. However, 
It was evident that the punished person would pay the price of losing a leg to gain freedom. Anna and Mitch could only leave Ryan to his own fate and make his own decision. They'll just keep looking for other clues to get out of here. While on the other side, Logan, the coroner, had already confirmed the identity of the deceased. The victim's wife was murdered five years ago. And the motive was because the victim was a compulsive gambler. His wife's tragic fate was a result of his debts to the loan sharks. Making his punishment in the game seem fitting, Detective Halloran, however, discovered that the voice on the recorded tape matched that of Jigsaw. The presence of Jigsaw's voice left them puzzled as to why it would resurface. From a USB drive recording found on the victim, they learned that there were four more victims undergoing the game's tests. Before they could determine the location of the victim's game, they quickly discovered another female victim. Through the autopsy, they discovered that the cause of the victim's death was due to the corrosion of sulfuric acid that reached her heart. She also had the same distinctive symbol markings on her body. Jake fucking saw. Logan's assistant, Eleanor, exhibited an excited demeanor when discussing Jigsaw which caught the attention of Detective Keith. Further investigation led them to a startling discovery. It turned out that since the notorious Jigsaw's death, someone had established a dark web called the Jigsaw Game Rules. Eleanor happened to be an avid follower of Jigsaw. The police found evidence that Eleanor was a frequent visitor to this website, raising suspicions of her involvement. However, it remained their personal speculation. What was even more bizarre was that they found traces of other people's blood DNA under the nail of the hooded victims they encountered earlier. This blood DNA matched Jigsaw's blood with a 100% certainty, confirming that it indeed belonged to Jigsaw. Detectives Halloran and Keith were now even more confused about what was happening. Meanwhile, Anna and Mitch discovered an open barn door on the other side. They immediately went inside to investigate and found a remote control hanging in a television on the wall. Ryan also noticed a television appearing under his feet. Upon entering the barn, they quickly took the remote control hanging above. However, they were unaware that it was a trap. Taking the remote triggered the door's switch mechanism, and the barn door quickly locked. By the time they realized they wanted to leave, it was too late. The captors continued to pass judgment on them regarding their lies. Their only chance of escaping was for Ryan outside to pull the operating lever to open the barn door, but it also meant that Ryan would have to sacrifice one of his legs for their lives. After explaining the rules, both sides appeared on the TV screen. Shortly after, the opening on the top of the barn began pouring grains inside. They desperately called out for help from Ryan, but Ryan couldn't face losing his leg. While Ryan was still struggling, the barn covered them in a flash and they were about to be buried. At that moment, although the grains stopped pouring in, something even more terrifying started to fall. Knives, farming tools, and various sharp implements began raining down. They were filled with terror as they witnessed the scene. Mitch was quickly hit by one of the blades, injuring his shoulder. A circular saw blade suddenly dropped in front of Anna narrowly missing her head. They desperately called out for help from Ryan. Perhaps Ryan realized that even if he didn't save them, he wouldn't be able to free himself from the wire beneath him. Ryan had to make a cruel decision, to pull the operating lever under his feet. As the machinery below started, the wires instantly severed Ryan's leg, and the door to the next stage and the barn door opened simultaneously. In the moment Anna rolled out, the farming tools almost took her life. Meanwhile, Logan found Eleanor and questioned her about the Jigsaw website. He wanted to know what was going on. Eleanor candidly told Logan that she was indeed a follower of Jigsaw but denied any involvement in these acts. She even took Logan on a tour of her extensive collection of Jigsaw's mechanical contraptions. Logan. Intrigued by these strange devices, became interested, but unbeknownst to them, they were being watched by Detective Keith Locke, who snapped a photo of them. Back in the secret room, Anna could only quickly bandage Ryan's wound. Unable to bear the pain, Ryan passed out. Suddenly, a set of headlights turned on behind Mitch. He noticed the letter X appearing on the vehicle, and upon opening it, he found a new tape recorder with his name written on it. As Mitch began playing the recording, he was caught off guard when hidden nooses under his feet suddenly lifted him up. Hello, Mitch. The recording exposed Mitch's lie about selling a motorcycle. It turned out that Mitch knew about the faulty brake system before selling the motorcycle but still sold it to the young man for his own gain. That young man happened to be the nephew of the captor. Now. Mitch would face punishment from a mechanical contraption related to the modified motorcycle. The captor gave Mitch a way out. The only way to stop the machine was to retrieve the motorcycle's brake mechanism below. However, 
The red winch rotating below could easily take his life with a single misstep. As the machine started, the winch began turning, gradually lowering Mitch. Anna, realizing the dire situation, quickly found an iron rod. She struggled to climb up and used the rod to halt the movement of the motorcycle's wheel, stopping the machine. Just when Mitch thought he was saved, the iron rod couldn't withstand the traction exerted by the machine. With the machine continuing its operation, Mitch was swiftly shredded into minced meat by the rapidly rotating red winch. Ryan, waking up from his unconscious state, was petrified as he witnessed the gruesome scene. Anna, determined to escape, returned to the previous secret room and decided to forcefully open the door that Ryan couldn't open. After exerting a tremendous amount of effort, Anna managed to pry the door open. However, the door was still locked with an iron chain, so Anna had no choice but to squeeze through the narrow opening. When Anna poked out half of her body, she realized that she could really come outside, but she didn't expect that a man wearing a pig's head mask suddenly appeared and stabbed her with a hypodermic needle. Anna soon fainted. Meanwhile, the police, in their efforts to unravel the perplexing case, decided to dig up Jigsaw's coffin to see if he was still alive and determine if he was behind the recent events. When they opened the coffin, the police were dumbfounded to see that it was Edgar, who was in a coma in the hospital. To their astonishment, Edgar also had the symbols left behind by the killer marked on his body. It turned out that the police officer guarding Edgar had been negligent, allowing the killer to abduct and murder him. That's what made Agent Keith think of Eleanor right away. He and his team hurried to Eleanor's collection room, but they found nothing, but Detective Halloran found a hidden door, and when he opened it, a body suddenly fell out, leaving the officers in a state of confusion. The victim had a note with the words only two left written on it. Realizing that there were still two survivors, Detectives Keith and Halloran decided to split up and capture Logan and Eleanor. Keith confronted Logan, who didn't resist arrest. Logan claimed that neither he nor Eleanor had been involved in these acts and admitted to visiting the collection room. Logan suspected that Halloran was framing them, starting from the moment Edgar was shot in the chest. He believed that Halloran had fired the fatal shot. It's possible he's the one who set this whole thing in motion. To confirm Logan's claim, Detective Keith took Logan to the autopsy room. They extracted the bullet from Edgar's body, and its model matched the one used by Halloran's gun. Armed with the ballistic evidence, Detective Keith prepared to apprehend Halloran. He instructed Logan to stay at home and not wander off. However, as soon as Logan arrived home, he discovered Eleanor waiting for him. Eleanor shared a piece of information with Logan, she knew the location of the game, because Eleanor had found animal feces on the previous victims. She guessed it was probably on one of Jigsaw's farms. When Logan was about to call the police with the news, Eleanor stopped him. She suspects that the kidnappers are probably police insiders. Eleanor took out her gun and planned to take Logan with her to be a vigilante. Unbeknownst to them, Halloran had been keeping an eye on them. And Keith, in Halloran's home, discovered puzzle pieces taken from the victim's body, confirming that it was indeed Halloran who did it. So Keith immediately issued a manhunt. Meanwhile, inside the secret room, the players Anna and Ryan woke up to find their feet chained with iron chains. To their surprise, Jigsaw appeared before them. Jigsaw revealed the reason why they were bound here to undergo the game's punishment. It turns out that in his youth, Ryan was so unruly and impulsive that he fell out of the car and onto the ground while sitting in the car. Not listening to his friend's good advice, his friend was distracted by his car and crashed into another car, killing him instantly. To evade responsibility, Ryan had lied to the police claiming that the accident was solely caused by his friend's driving, and the accident involving Anna's child wasn't caused by her husband suffocating the child. Anna, who was not asleep at the time, couldn't bear the child's crying due to postpartum depression, so she chose to smother their child and blame her sleeping husband for the child's death. They were about to face the ultimate punishment here for their lies. Jigsaw informed them that the bullet would be the key to their freedom. After setting up the traps, Jigsaw chose to leave the room. Having gone through multiple games, Anna knew that the only way to escape was to follow the rules of the game. The bullet left for them indicated that only one person among them would survive. So Anna took the gun and prepared to kill Ryan. Ryan pleaded with Anna to calm down, believing that there might be another way. But Anna couldn't listen. Faced with Ryan's desperate pleas, Anna still chose to pull the trigger, but the gun blew up, killing Anna instantly. It turned out that Jigsaw had rigged the gun beforehand. Ryan was shocked to discover that the key to unlocking their shackles was actually inside the bullet. Inside the bullet, there were a green key and a yellow key. These keys matched the colors of their shackles. Now they can't survive because the key was destroyed by the shot. On the other side, Eleanor and Logan arrive at the farm. 
but inside they find the motorbike mechanism, as this contraption was also found in Eleanor's collection room. Logan began to suspect that Eleanor was the one behind all of this, just as they were confronting each other. Halloran, who had been tracking them, suddenly appeared behind Logan and captured him, and Eleanor had to drop the gun under Halloran's threat. However, Halloran didn't expect Logan to fight back. Taking advantage of the situation, Logan managed to knock the gun out of Halloran's hand. He urged Eleanor to escape while he faced off against Halloran. Logan, however, was knocked to the ground by Halloran, who had the spanner weapon. Halloran intended to continue pursuing Eleanor, but before he could even spot her, he was injected with a syringe by a mysterious figure and fell unconscious. When he woke up, he found himself and Logan both trapped with collars around their necks. A button device appeared below them. Before they could grasp what had happened, the kidnapper's voice echoed through the speakers, revealing that they were the final players in the game. They were about to face punishment for their past mistakes. The laser-cutting weapons attached to their collars would take their lives if activated. The only way to escape was to confess their sins and repent. In 60 seconds, the game will begin. Halloran said he'd go first. But instead he pushed Logan's button. As the lasers began to close in on Logan, he quickly confessed to his past mistake. It turned out that as a medical intern, Logan had misread Jigsaw's x-rays, causing Jigsaw to miss the opportunity for timely treatment of his cancer. Although Logan sincerely apologized, he couldn't escape the weapon's attack. He fell to the ground and died, thinking he had won and would be spared. Detective Halloran realized he couldn't escape the punishment either, as the lasers threatened his life. He had to admit to some shameful behavior on his part. Halloran had abused his position, taking bribes, framing innocent people, and even releasing criminals by destroying evidence. He had also caused the deaths of innocent individuals. After confessing these crimes, the lasers unexpectedly stopped. Halloran finally breathed a sigh of relief, thinking he had been spared, but he never expected the dead Logan to stand up. When Logan removes the laser mechanism from his neck, we realize that the blood on his body was fake. He then revealed the truth behind the whole situation. When Logan uncovered the two dried up corpses on the floor, it became clear that the director had used parallel montage to narrate the entire story. The secret room game orchestrated by Jigsaw had already happened, and Logan was one of the players at that time. He was caught by Jigsaw because he got the wrong x-ray of Jigsaw. Logan is the man who didn't wake up on the first level of the Chamber of Secrets. Jigsaw considered it an unintentional mistake and chose to save Logan instead. Ten years later, Logan, however, restarted and imitated the game. He found three victims who had committed similar mistakes in the past and used the same methods to murder them. Logan did it to get Detective Halloran to fall for it. It turned out that Edgar, who initially escaped, was the very same person who had killed Logan's wife during a home invasion. However, Edgar was released by Detective Halloran because he was Halloran's informant. Therefore, Logan planned the entire ordeal. He edited the original recordings of Jigsaw, making it seem like Edgar was targeted by Jigsaw to survive. Edgar had to follow the instructions on the recording. The gunshot that hit Edgar in the chest was also orchestrated by Logan, who had been in hiding. He had replaced the bullet with a similar one beforehand and framed Detective Halloran for it. The blood DNA was also injected into the victim by Logan by stealing Jigsaw's sample. The puzzle piece evidence found at Halloran's house was also planted by Logan. Most importantly, Eleanor could provide Logan with an alibi. Logan became Jigsaw's protege 10 years ago. Today, Logan will use Jigsaw to exact his revenge. As Logan pressed the button on the remote in his hand, Detective Halloran's head was instantly sliced into pieces by the laser. I speak for the dead.